Okay, welcome back now. And now that's the time. Before we just came back, I thought that, okay, that's going to be a good idea to just increase the fonts in my art studio. I hope that it's going to be fine also for you and you had a better view of what do I write there. Although I do plan to just provide the source course which I have, uh, but I hope that at the same time they can see, you have a better view of the thing which I write. Okay. At this tutorial, the plan is going to be very interesting because we are just going to do the core part of writing a program in the stand. And it's going to just walk you through step by step how each block has to be filled out. Okay. We just start from the data. For the data, I'm just going to start what kind of data did we have? If you remember, if I just go back to the woman data sets that we had, if I just scroll up, you see that we had X and we had Y, and we created a list of X and Y and N. In order to fill the data segment, always I do recommend you go back to your R script, search for where you just, just created a list of the data for your data stand. Okay. Now I created X and I created Y and I created N. Okay. The thing is that I just gonna start with the N because it's gonna be the easiest part. N is the number of the woman or the observation in my data sets. N can be the number of the people, which can be one, two, three, four, five, or it can go to infinity, but not much big. But any number which the number of the woman can take, it's gonna be an integer then as a result what gonna be essentially something which is very uh, predefined with the stand is that when you define a number which is integer you have to just put INT which INT stands for as an integer it means that when you just put for example N just right in front of the integer although you create a space that you do not mix the i and t with the n, it shows that the thing which you are talking about is an integer number. And we call the integer as the n. And what do I just call it as the n? Because I call that n here at the data stand. The thing which I created a list as an input data for my stand program. When you're done with that, this is extremely important. If you forget that, you're just going to get an error message when you go back to the R and then you just just write do the sampling there. It's going to be the time that after each argument at the data blocks, parameters block or the model block, you have to put a semicolon. Otherwise, you just get into a problem later. Okay. Now, in order to specify what do I have, I know that with the R normally I just go to press the hashtag and I write the description there. But at the stand file, the hashtag is not defined to write your description. You have to just put double, I should say, um, the, the, the slash forward, I should say, symbol that we have. And whatever comes after that is denoted as a description, which is not be considered as a part of the code that you are writing. I'm just going to write it as N stands for, it signifies the number of the observation. That's going to be the about the N. Okay. I told you to just fill out, when you just want to fill out the data block, you have to always be in harmony with the data which you created as a list. The other thing which I had, it was the X. X represented what? X represented the covariates or the features or the variables or you can call it even the predictors of your data sets now i go back to this i just go to the next line i know that the x as a covariate it can be for example it can be the column of a matrix of our data sets when you take that column out you have to look at it as what? You can look at it as a vector because each individual components on that column can be indexed. And it's good always to look at it as a vector. Then the thing which I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead, create a vector. And I know that the size of that vector, it's exactly what? It's exactly the number of the observation which I have. Go back again to, for example, to the woman data sets which we had. I'm just going to open it. You see that the number of the observation, 
is going to be 1 to 15. We had 15 observation because we had 15 women. And now look at that. Imagine the weight is going to be taken as my liable or a predictor of the model. You see that, for example, if I remove this column, I can look at it as a vector because every single component there, it can be thought as which has, has an index next to it. For example, for the first woman, which the weight is 115 pounds, it can be indexed as 1. Then whenever you have this way, the mutual way for any components of your data, you index it with something, it's convenient to look at it as a vector. And you see that, for example, the, the, the length of the vector which you have as a weight, it's essentially the same as the number of the observation. If you look at the weight column as a single vector, the length of this vector is also essentially as the number of the observation that you have. If you have 15 observation, the length of your weight vector is again as 15. If you had 20, you had 20. And essentially, if you have n number of types, should say observation, the length of your feature is going to be n. And that's why we have to specify the length of the vector, which is going to be the n. And I'm just going to call it as x. Because my x, which I define it in the woman data sets, as a list for stand, it's, you see that x? I'm just going to come here that x. Then it's going to be my covariates. I put the semicolon. Don't forget to just put the semicolon. Otherwise, you're just running your sampling and you get the error message. And the sampling process is halted. When x represents what? Represents the predictors the predictor okay if i have let's say for example if you're working with the cases that you have for example multiple predictors or variable how to define it here that's what we're going to talk about that next on the other tutorials when we have i should say a huge number of i should say predictors also the other thing which is left, as I said, as an advice, you have to always go back to check on the list which you created as an input data for the stand. You see that the, the, I defined x, I have defined n. The thing which is missing is going to be the y. I'm going to go back there again. I'm just going to, again for the y. My y, what was that in a woman data sets? It was the height. You see that. I'm just going to extract just that column from this matrix of the women data sets. This column, which is taken out, is pulled out from the data sets as a matrix, is gonna be taken, it's gonna be looked at as a vector. I'm just gonna go ahead, then again, write it as a vector. The vector which I have, what is the dimension and the length of that vector? Essentially, again, is the end. Maybe the caps, that's right. It's going to be the N. Because if you look back again to the N, the length of the, I should say, the height, the number of the components, which this is in that vector, is exactly like the number of the observation. It's very obvious. Then I just go ahead and I put the Y, because that's the Y which I have taken it from my, I should say, from my object, from my list. And I put semicolon. I have to be too smart not to forget to put the semicolon for each line of the codes at the stand file and I just make sure that I do that. Then it's going to represent the response variable. Okay. It's going to be the response variable and I can go back to check that. I have X, I have Y, I have N and I have all of them has been defined here. You see the correspondence between the list which you created in R for your input to the stand and the data block which you define it in the stand i should say script you see that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence there that's the thing which is crucial to always make sure of it then. okay now at this stage we are done with filling the data block of our stand file okay and now uh i'm just going to stop this tutorial now then when we just come back, we are just going to talk about how to fill out the parameters because that block also is going to be very important. Then I can't wait to see you all.
back for the next tutorials.